Even though in retirement you may be free of work and free of deadlines, you will not be free of taxes. In fact, many retirees are surprised to find themselves actually in a higher tax bracket in retirement. Uh, my guest, Mark Henry in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, so, Mark, uh, I'm sure you run into this. How can a retiree end up in a higher tax bracket? How does that happen and then how do you manage that? Yeah, so that happens an awful lot. Um, so, so here's what you have to think about. When it comes to taxation, the best place you could be in retirement is in the lowest tax bracket possible. I like to say it like this, I don't want to pay taxes. Now, you want to do that legally, of course, but you want to be in the lowest possible tax bracket. Well, proper planning allows you to do that. So we have to watch what accounts we take money from and what the uh, causes on the accounts that we have, what's causing them to generate taxes. For instance, sometimes people say, well, I've got a lot of money in this CD and it pays me X number of dollars. Well, that's fantastic, except for sometimes those CDs, of course, all CDs send you a 1099 at the end of the year, and that 1099 might move you to another bracket. And by going up a little bit, in fact, I see clients all the time that come in and they're actually paying tax on their Social Security, if you can imagine that, Scott. So then when it uh, comes time to start generating income from the retirement plans, how are these various retirement plans taxed? Right, so you have to think about it this way. The tax code's kind of complicated, but it really doesn't have to be. You have to look at what's earned income, which earned income would be off of your brokerage account, you received income. You have to look at long-term capital gains when you buy or sell something. You have to look at your 401ks or IRAs, typically when you get into retirement, they become an IRA, and those are gonna be taxed. And then you have to look at your, quote, qualified accounts that really might not have a tax implication, things like a Roth account. Well, in retirement, eventually Uncle Sam does have to get paid back, and typically with an IRA, for example, that's a required minimum distribution or an RMD that uh, takes place starting at age 70 and a half. Is it possible to reduce the taxation on those withdrawals? Yeah, there's a lot of strategies that we can use, Scott, that would um, help you to reduce your IRA uh, withdrawals and the um, tax that you're going to pay on those. So think of it this way. One, the government's going to make you start taking a withdrawal, even if you don't want to, at 70 and a half. Well, looking at your qualified accounts, when I say qualified, I'm talking about those IRA dollars, the dollars that you haven't paid any tax on yet. Looking at those accounts and planning on when we're going to take them, when we're going to take withdrawals out of them, and why, and then doing it to keep you in a certain tax bracket while we're withdrawing that money can be one of the best tools we can use to help plan for tax avoidance. Mark, thanks again for sharing your time and expertise with us today. Thank you, Scott. That's Mark Henry in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is Retirement News Online. Thanks for watching.